Welcome everyone to the Mastermind Book Club. Tonight we are reviewing another marketing book in our goal to reaching 12 books in marketing in the next within the next three months. This is our second one. And uh, I like these books. They're teaching me a huge importance on marketing myself, marketing my products, marketing to other people, marketing to my family, marketing to my friends. I believe that this is really showing me more than what I expected to get into as I started to get into marketing. And I hope you gather some of the information that we as a mastermind book club are going to share in the next several minutes. So get ready here as we prepare to review the 22 immutable rules of marketing. So let's go with Rule number one. Let's see if we can get it on here. Whoops, we're done. It just opened up. So the authors of 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing are Al Reese and Jack Trout. Al Reese and Jack Trout. And they have an important message to leave to each and every one of us. The law of leadership. Does anyone want to comment anything on the law of leadership? That's the first immutable law. Yeah. Is that the first one? Yes, that's the first that one. The law of leadership. Um, whoever does something first, leadership. Yes, it's better, better yes. to be first. Better to be first because of perception, uh, the business of perception. Right? Correct. Who was the first normally, one to fly? I was going to say that normally the first one, they, they remain. They 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 capture market share and they keep it. So they gave an uh, example of uh, Heineken. Uh, Heineken was the first import. Yes, Heineken was definitely the first uh, imported beer. Is that, is that it, Charles? Did we lose you or yes. did you lose me? <laughs> All right. So let's re Wait review the, the next one. Here we go. The law of the category. The law of the category. Law number two. Anyone want to comment on this one? You can use the letters that you see there. The, the, the sentences. It's up to you. If you can't be first in a category, what then? Set up a new category because you're not always going to be first in. However, if you set up a new category, for example, I'm selling blue and you could sell red. Right? Apple was not the first one to the scene on what they do on their computers at the time. But they did have the easiest access of wording and it stuck to people. And their story was even more powerful. And people understood it and believed in it. And that is the category that we all need to focus on. Number three, law number three. The law of the mind. Anyone want to comment on this one? I, I, I think, well, it's, it's on a slide. But it's about being in, getting in people's heads, basically. Correct. You yes. know, to, to make it such that they know who you are, what you're about, more than, you know, trying to get out there and promote yourself, you know, like with like some sort of marketing tactics. So really, really just putting yourself in the heads of people so they like think about you when they think about that thing that it is that they want, or that thing that they want to, uh, to do, or whatever. Like it has to be you that they think about. So this is the, what, what this one says. It says that the law of the mind, we technically focus on selling a product, on getting income, on generating income, on uh, making the market work for our needs. Instead, what we should be doing is attempting to solve a problem that our potential clients have. 
And that way we get into their minds and we stay in their minds because they know that we are in their best interest. And sometimes we forget that. I've forgotten it and I need to be reminded or as I'm going through whatever it is I'm going through and all of a sudden, boom, oops, I forgot. I need to resolve something for this person in order for them to understand what I'm trying to do. Got it? Yeah, I was thinking that in the, in the law of the mind, it's, it's sort of like uh, when you say Kodak, you know, you automatically think of, uh, uh, of, of photography or, you know, yes. that's what I was thinking about when they were saying the law of the mind. And this yeah. one is really good. The law of perception, you know, it's not, it's not the product or the quality of the product. It's, uh, it's only the perception that, that is perceived by the customer. So they went on to talk about different cars and different things that we think are, are the best, but they're really not. It's just our perception of it. So oh. like, um, I guess they'll talk about this later, like, what is it, Toyota, Toyota, Honda, and yeah. Nissan. Nissan. Are, Japanese are known for, for good, really, really good cars. Yes. Yeah. Right. Correct, correct, correct. That sort of thing. And uh, Japanese. Even though you may have, even though you may not have, not have driven the car, like you asked someone, have you had a car? Have you driven it? Have No, but they just know that the perception is that the car is good. So that's enough. And the so, same thing, if, the, if this is a bad, like they were talking about Audi. Uh, back in like 1986, Audi had a problem with acceleration, even though they couldn't duplicate it again. That stigma stuck with them. And yeah. people be like, oh, I don't want an Audi. <laughs> Well, the name also contributes to that because here Audi is sort of like getting out of whatever situation you're in. But in reference to Honda, I'm Audi, yep, go ahead, go ahead. I'm Audi five thousand. There's a term of <laughs> Audi five thousand, right? It's like, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> that means I'm out of right. here. I'm out of here. That's right. That's right. And in reference to Honda, most Japanese relate Honda to motorcycles instead of cars and they, they're not as, as popular in Japan as they are in the US and, and in other parts of the world in Latin America and so on. There, there we right, go with the right, law of yeah. perception. In Japan, Toyota, <laughs> Nissan are number one and number two. May, may I also interject uh, vaccines They're seen as an experiment, you know, on minorities, people of color. Yes. That's the perception that many people hold, right? Yes, correct. So because of that perception, eh, you know, people don't want to, you know, take what they think are, you know, risk, big risk and, and having those done. So anyway, that's another perception right there that I just want to Correct. Confirm. Thank you for sharing. That is the truth. There is a perception in reference to the uh, vaccines and that perception is not a positive one. And uh, well, with today's release, uh, the news this morning with Johnson and Johnson makes it worse. So the law of perception right now is working against exactly vaccines currently, because there are two vaccines that are not. Ready. What happened with Johnson and Johnson? The vaccine. Johnson and Johnson had a. Are clotting are are, are, are were, making what was that? clotting 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 yeah. is especially in women. My my sister got two blood clots, almost heart attacks. Uh, and wow. she's, she's home at bed. Um, My sister was scheduled to get a Johnson and Johnson today and she actually used to work for Johnson and Johnson. Wow, that's she crazy. Was, she was scheduled to get the shot today. She used to be like a cont. I forget, she's like in some role where she's it's serious stuff and she's in charge, in, in charge of all these drugs. She's with Merck now, but she was with Johnson and Johnson. And they also have, remember that stigma, remember they had that big lawsuit way back when from what, the, the talcum powder? Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah, so they don't need another situation, right? <laughs> well, I mean, they're immune to, to lawsuits, supposedly. I don't know if that's reality or not, but that's the way the ball bounces with that. Uh, the next law of the 22 immutable laws is the law of focus. Anyone want to say anything in reference to this? The most powerful concept in marketing is owning a word in the prospect's mind. Mm -hmm. Get reeducated is the first word that comes to mind because- Published today, baby. 
published oh, today. Ahead. Well, Reggie, <laughs> Reggie, congratulations. Reggie, congratulations. You've got to help me publish my words. I got two words. It's easy. <laughs> I can show you how. Yeah, that, that's right. really wonderful. Maybe we can do a, a Zoom if other people here that are that want to show uh, want to get involved as well, and then that way you only do it once. How Takes a that? while, a few months, but you can get it done. Yeah, no, well, let's let's start in the next uh, five days, within five days, because uh, uh, that's the way things work <laughs> around here. So the law of focus again is one word. Focus on one word. What's your one word? If you have whatever word it may be. For me, it's CEO trades and CEO health. CEO trades and CEO health. And I've got to get those registered because, I don't know, Charles might go and run and register before me. <laughs> Make billions off of me. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. <laughs> right? <laughs> the next law is the law of exclusivity. Anyone want to talk about this? Exclusivity. Being excluded. Okay. Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Charles. I was going to talk. I just want to say that the, with the law, it's, it's like you can't take over another company's word. Like FedEx tried to take over worldwide from DHL. Yes. And it just didn't work for them. No, no, no. Uh, Does not work. That's or, right. Or, or fast food belongs to McDonald's and Burger King tried to take that over. Correct. And, uh, that's it correct. Just didn't work for them. Yep. It only provides confusion and it's it in reality, whatever is exposed to our brains, that's what is fixed. It's juxtaposed. And there's really no changing of the idea of the product. So you're right. Thank you, Charles, for that. The next law, the law of exclusivity. Anyone want to comment on this one? I thought you just did that one. No, we just did the law of, whoops, oh, I did, sorry. Oh, I don't know how I got that twice. Jeez, sorry, Reg, that was on purpose to make sure you're paying attention. I know I'm not. <laughs> the law of the ladder, the law of the ladder. Let's go, who wants to comment on this one? The strategy. I remember that saying yes. something around like being like it may be better to be like the third wrong or something on the ladder versus. Well, I forget. Well, I forget now. Hold, well, it's can better, it's better be second because each each rung of the ladder tells your market yeah. share. So like you had, uh, I think one with the phone. What was it? Sprint MCI, Sprint MCI, AT and T. So AT and T, MCI and Sprint is the is the. It's the rung on the ladder that they go. So yes. Sprint has to be careful because they're at the very bottom, whereas MCI could take over AT&T, but AT&T owns like 50, 60% of the market share. So um, it, it depends on where you are. So being number three, you got to look at not being, I guess, put out the market share altogether even though they said in one of them that even if you were number three, number three position could be so many billions and billions of dollars. Correct. And, you know, but you yeah. still you still have to fight to stay there. That's correct, uh, Charles. That is definitely correct. Uh, I appreciate that you mentioned that because it's very, very important. Uh, the law of the ladder. Thank you. Let's see here. The law of the duality. Anyone want to comment on this one? In the long run, every market becomes a two horse race. It's Burger neck and neck. McDonald's. In the beginning, any category is a ladder with many rungs. Over time, only two steps remain on it, right? Therefore, there's a chance to compete for this stage. You need to do this because according to the law of perception, the consumer believes that the two leading brands that are at the top are the best. Second step or not will depend on your efforts and what kind of competitors you have. Our next law, well, before we go to the next law, I just wanna make sure that that last law that we just went over, the law of duality. We often think that we have to go neck and neck with competitors. We do, we are always in competition. We are always in competition with who? With ourselves. 
yes, someone might have a similar business. You might have some type of competition with them, but it's a race against yourself. How much are you willing to work, sacrifice to be able to realize whatever it is that you want? And that's the bottom line on the law of duality. Yeah, I want to say something, David. Yes. Um, they say in the book, try don't copy another business. Try to be different, something different than everybody else, and you will be successful. Correct. Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Yes. We copy yes. everything. Yes, we all, we many of us do. Um, the law of the opposite. What is the law of the opposite? Anyone want to dive into this one? The law of the opposite pretty much was stating that you your strategy is determined by by what position you're on a ladder. Um, you leverage the leader's strength into a weakness, and you don't try to be better than a leader. You try to be different. So, um, like like Pepsi, like Coca Cola leads Pepsi because Pepsi is the old established brand but pepsi came out saying that it's a choice for a new generation correct yes but they're still second they, yeah. <laughs> they're still second people will beg to differ <laughs> correct correct uh there's um they're, they're just uh, i'd say the second brand is always for those people who dislike the first brand and that's the bottom line uh, which they're all that will always exist. Uh, the law, the law of the opposite. We just went through this. Uh, yep. And the law of division. Over time, a category will divide and become two or more categories. At first, there's one category, but over time, what happens over time? It's divided and it's divided into several segments. What does this mean? Into several segments is a separate market where. Uh, well, this is the one that they use the cars. I like this one because they they took uh, Acura, which is the uh, luxury luxury brand of Honda. So when when Acura came out, then Toyota came out with Lexus, and uh, what is that? Nissan came out with Infinity. So that so that's the the law of division. So they they. They were already leading in their categories, but they came out with, I guess, subdivisions to work on. Correct, correct. That, that's right. And that's, I mean, all of this takes a lot of thinking. And how do we do that? It's through the law of perspective. The law of perspective is the marketing effects take place over an extended period of time. The long-term effects often do not coincide with the short-term effects. Therefore, it is always necessary to remember that actions aimed at short-term effects can produce quick results, but in the long run, they will only do more harm than good. The authors in the book, The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing, advise you to focus on long-term effects as they will be able to support and develop your company. The next law, the law of line extension. Anyone want to comment on this one? Yeah, that, that was the uh, the one where basically you create, you have a product, like for example, you're like, you have the a beer, like beer, and then you create like a, a light beer. Yeah. Right? It's sort of like, let me create something to sort of like, you know, to maybe appeal to a certain other group of people in this case, right? But Sometimes in doing that, you actually could like cannibalize the, the original thing that you had going on, right? So it's not always going to work because you have an extens extended, like you extend the product to maybe meet someone else's demand. You could actually hurt yourself by doing that. But that's what, you know, that would be a, an example of the law of line extension. That's, that's right. That's right. And the authors believe that um, become everything and for everyone is a strategy that's not going to bring results if you are attempting to become everything for everyone it is not going to bring the results that you want you have to narrow it down you have to be more specific you have to pick and choose at the beginning and once you have control of that group then you expand the product line 
Because if you do it in the beginning, it's only going to give your company a short-term effect if you attempt to reach everyone. Leadership in its field, increasing profits, because in the future, the more products, more markets, more alliances the company makes, the less money it earns. There are many products in the shelves of supermarkets. Many. You go in for a ketchup and you have 20 different ketchups. You go in for steak sauce, you have many sauces and so on, cereal, uh, bread, and so on. You have so many products to choose from, but they all pretty much are very similar. It's crazy, but they're not specifically catering to anyone um, just by having a product that's similar. They've got to represent something different. The law of sacrifice. Does anyone care to take this one? Sacrifice their lives. Or the betterment. Well, pretty our... much is saying that you you give up something. You either give up, uh, I guess your your how you do your product. You give up your mar marketing strategy, or you're constantly trying to tweak what you're doing. Um, that's the law of sacrifice, where you're you're trying to get more market share by 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 sacrificing what you already have, and a lot of times that doesn't work, because if you sacrifice your main thing, you lose market share. So, yeah, that, that's, that's basically right. And uh, at times we have to make a choice and the specific choices are usually the product line, the target market and constant change. And the target market, as specific as you make it, the better of a, a possibility you have to getting better sales. But being broad, some people are not gonna be happy with that. And, you know, that's just the reality. It's better to be more specific in tune with one group so that that group knows they're being appreciated, whatever group it is that you like. The law of attributes, anyone? The law of attributes. For every attribute, there is an opposite effective attribute. The mistake of many companies is that they want to exceed the strengths of the leader. This is a difficult path that usually fails in much better to look for the opposite attribute, which will give you the opportunity to play against the leader. Therefore, to be successful, you need to have a specific idea or attribute around which you will focus your marketing efforts. So the right. law, so, so I, yeah, go ahead. So what, what came to mind with, with me is like uh, way back when, when you had regular Coke, then it came out with Diet Coke. Yes, correct, correct. Uh, and as well as classic Coke. Yes. So that's, uh, and there are many others, I just don't know them all, uh, creating confusion amongst us. The law of candor, candor, am I pronouncing that right? I believe so, candor. Candor, yeah, being yeah, truthful. Candor. All right, Reg, keep going, keep going. Yeah, just like saying, saying, saying something as it is, like if you, for example, have a product like uh, Listerine and, you know, people will say like, oh, this stuff is nasty. And then they say, oh, yeah, we are nasty. The stuff is nasty. But, you know, you associate that with like the fact that it burns in your mouth, but it's nasty that it might be doing something like the formula is actually like killing germs. So you just sort of go with it. <laughs> well, yeah, we're nasty, but we're, you know, but we kill germs. Well, I remember 30 years ago when we were in high school, a lot of kids used to use mouthwash to get uh, their kicks. Drunk. To yeah. get drunk. To, to get, get drunk. Uh, hot. Yeah. Yeah. It was legal to yeah. purchase. <laughs> Still is. Uh, so the law of candor. Using the negative, admit a negative, the prospect will give a positive. Meaning if you're wrong, then admit it. If people don't like your product, admit it. And it might just give you the sales that you need. One of the most effective ways to introduce a prospect into the mind is to first recognize the negative aspects and only then turn into positive ones. The law of singularity. Ruth, Gina, or Martha, would you like to go over this one? Eating. No. Yes. Yes. I think that's, uh, yes. I don't know, Martha can correct me, but is that, is that when you only work on one thing at a time, right? One focus. Yes, uh, correct. One product, one idea. Correct. Correct, correct, correct. One focus is much better than 
multitasking, which we all like to do, including me at times. That is a reality. So it doesn't work like the stock market where you no. diversify. They say it's safer for you to diversify. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's kind of a lie. You don't have to do that. Like, because if you see some of the people who are really the most successful, like if you think about, you know, Amazon or whatever, and how he was like focused on books before he went and did anything else. Right. So some of those concepts are lies. Like you really focus on one thing you can do well. And also like they talk about department stores, whereas like a lot of them are struggling or whatever. Plus like Sears is one of them. We've seen Sears in and out of bank, you know, one thing. And then they focus on like swimsuits or whatever and this sort of thing and try to get someone to, to model their swimsuits. You know, it's like appeal to other people if we get... But then ultimately you sort of like stretch too thin because you're in so many different things, so many places and you do, and you're in like, it's like, what is your identity at this point? Correct. So. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, go ahead. Oh. We're, we're losing you. Who's on the connect? Yeah. I think, she, I think she's on the wall. was trying to say Reggie thing. Much better than. Uh, can you hear me walking on the water? <laughs> Performing miracles. Can you hear me now? You're walking on the oh, water. Yes. yes. We can hear yeah. you now, Verizon. Yeah, we can yeah, hear you now, Verizon. Sorry, the park where it kind of breaks up. But um, so I think what he meant is that you have the companies that are focused on one thing, um, single-handedly focused, you know, on one thing, and doing that exceedingly well. They usually do better than the multitude of companies that tend to diversify and dab, dibble and dabble into other products than what they have started with. So I think, I think that might be true to that extent, if you put it that way, that's what he was trying to convey. That was what I got from that, because I thought the same thing too, Reggie. Um, but this book is kind of old too. I, I don't know this book. Yeah, it is, it's a, little it's a little dated. Yes. It's that, outdated there. Some of the things yeah. here, as I said in the beginning, are not because they're immutable laws, but more of a reference point on how to get your company started off the ground and with proper strategies. Uh, that it's very important to be aware of that. The law of unpredictability. Anyone? Comments? The law of unpredictability. Unless you write well, your- I think this is the one that you had to be flexible because you don't know what your competitor is doing. So, so you have to always be able to make changes, um, even though it's saying predictability is I, I got from you had to be flexible to to know know when when to make changes. Like like don't be so rigid in your plan because you don't know what your competitor is doing to capture the market space. You might have to adjust and and be flexible. Your strategies will have to be flexible to keep, uh, I guess, be consistent with the constant change in the market share. Correct. Exactly. Thank you, Charles. Thank you for that. The law of success. The law of success. Success often leads to arrogance and arrogance to failure. When people are successful, they become less objective. They often substitute their own judgment for what the market really needs. Success often leads to a comprehensive expansion of the market, whoops, of the product line. Companies think that the main reason for brand success is the name. Yeah, I believe that it's in the name. So it immediately starts looking for other products that could have the same name on them. And that is good and it's not good at the same time because if you start to look for other products with the same name, it's not gonna work. For example, if you're going to go and use a Xerox machine, then everything is a Xerox, right? So we've got to be careful yeah. with associating the same brand success with other products. It's better to have its own name instead of utilizing the, the original name. And, and he talked about, um, you know, the Trump Towers, the Trump name, and how... Oh boy, is uh, got a little bit, you know, I mean, his ego got in the way. Yeah. This company really have not been doing that while even carrying his name. So and then he ended up in billions you know, of dollars of debt. Yes. 
<laughs> and bank reps. I mean, yeah, uh, the yeah. casinos, the real estate, the you know, the, the you know, so many different that. things. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. Somebody yeah. asked a question: you know how, how do you get to be thirty-three billion dollars in debt and then come out be positive seven or eight billion dollars? Because somebody, you know, somebody answer that for me. He knows how to leverage that. Is. He knows how to leverage that. Daddy's a big one. Yeah. There, there are rules. Sorry, I was being in, Oh, <laughs> your daddy's a big one. <laughs> Just no, no, I was, I was trying to say his dad, you know, left him quite a bit of money in the name. Yes, that's correct. Know, and, 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 and yes. His now dad he did could navigate. His dad helped him out. However, the biggest secret is that he knows how to utilize taxes to his advantage, debt to his advantage, as well as negotiate with minorities and not pay them well. And that's why there are many, many, many lawsuits out there right now pending to get paid for work done. Will they ever get paid? I don't know. Uh, I'm not foreseeing the future that they will, but I don't know. He's the king of bankruptcy. He also, yeah. he also appeals to, I mean, he, he, he appeals to a lot of people because he's very, like, there are a lot of people, just if you notice, you know, just from this past election, the fact that so many people voted for him, there are a lot of people that are pretty much like, like that nonsense brashness, you know, uh, just being like very nasty, being egotistical. So there are a lot of people that think that that's cool. Yes, so, correct. You know, he, he was able to put himself out there, obviously with the name in the back. They, they normally and call like that. do business that way, and a lot of people. I think that that's cool. Got it. You're breaking up again. Yes, this is Gina. This I think time, Yeah. I don't hear. Well, maybe we lost her. Uh, the law of failure. Failure is ex is to be expected and accepted. You need to admit your mistakes and failures. This will allow you to quickly respond to the situation and thus try to fix everything. Our recent Jack Trout suggests openly reviewing the organization's plan. This will reduce the arrogance of leaders and make the right decision. Whoops. Somebody's uh, mic needs to be muted, if that's okay. I don't know who's. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. The law of hype. The law of hype. The situation is often, often the opposite of the way it appears in the press. As a rule, information that is posted on the first pages in the media does not accurately reflect the current situation. There are many companies who will seek money and will tell you exactly what you need to hear so that they sound all pretty and rosy and everything. Their, their T's, are, T's are crossed and their I's are dotted. But then in reality, they're in bankrupt situation. They have no opportunities and they're fishing to see if they can get uh, some type of uh, money from a loan or, or whatever or whatever institution uh, venture capitalist is, is available to give them money the law of acceleration anyone want to take this one on successful programs are not built on fads they're built on trends a oh, yeah i like this one i didn't know it was that one good so like the whole idea, instead of and having a fad, which will like phase out after a very short period of time, it's better to have something that may be a long-term trend, whereby basically instead when you're actually at the peak of your success, instead of like forcing it down people's throat and trying to give them everything that they want now, you basically dampen some of that success that you're having and then you stretch it out over, over, you know, the, over a certain period of time as best you can to keep it going so that you don't die, so that you, you know, so that you're still in the minds and hearts of people, whatever they continue to buy your thing or continue to produce, not produce, or to, you know, to, to uh, you know, to take on your product or whatever it may be, and you stick around, you know, in that way better as opposed to, you know, it's just like you're here today, gone tomorrow. You, so it's better that way. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Reggie, for sharing. Um, the uh... And they talked about like the Barbie doll, the Barbie, Barbie doll, being like the long-term trend. And then there was a company, I forget who it was, uh, who had the uh, Cabbage, Patch, Cabbage Patch Kids, yes. which they basically like had success with. And then they got it going, like they ramped it, you know, they basically like had so much success and they had like good chunks of, you know, you know uh, uh, maybe so 700, got a 700 some odd million dollars in sales, 200 some million dollars in profit or whatever it was. But then, you know, in the next so many years they went bankrupt 
and then somebody else took on the Cabbage Patch Kids and they're still making them profitable even till now, I guess it is. So Got those it. types of things. Matter of fact. Can you, can that be also applied to like Coca-Cola that did that cherry Coke? I don't know if it's still, I don't, I don't drink Coke, but you know, that was like a fad, right? That cherry Coke, they probably made a little bit of money in the beginning, but then lost more. Is that, is that an example as well, Reggie or, or David? I, I know. Uh, because Coca-Cola well, did well with their classic Coke, you know? Yes. That, but they still have that on, under the, on the market, don't they? Mm -hmm. That Are probably falls Coke? under uh, yeah, cherry the line. Oh, still out. The, what is the name of that? The line six. I keep forgetting the, the term where you, you you extend your product out. Uh, well, we we covered we covered it a few. Line extension. The law of extension. Yeah, line extension. Law yeah, of extension. Yeah, so like that's oh, that also okay. falls in there. That's correct. So that's that's another one. Uh, the law of resources. I believe this is one of the last ones. Without adequate funding, an idea won't get off the ground. Marketing is a game that takes place in the mind of a prospect. To get into the mind, you need money. And you need money to yeah, stay money. conscious. After you've penetrated it, you will go further and faster with a weak idea and a lot of money than with a brilliant idea without money. Sorry to say, but this has changed. The game has changed. Money doesn't matter as much as uh, some of the other things that were mentioned in this book, because you can just get on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, or yeah, any so of those. it's different. Yes, and I believe no one really uses money there, and people have gotten off the ground. Yeah, it's a lot reason. better. Some of the them areas of entry are better. Some of them will use dancing. Some of them will use uh, just communicating, and some of them will use a specific business to sell or to inform others. And I'd say that, that um, you have to use your idea to find the money. I mean, that's the bottom line, just like it says here at the, at, at the bottom. Uh, ma marketing will be added later in your business. It doesn't have to be the first thing. Just be aware of that. The authors recommend the following sequence in reference to marketing, right? First, create an idea, then raise money to exploit it. You first create an idea. Now, what does this mean? To me, it means what's your magic word, number one. What's your magic word? What's your magic category for this word, right? What's your magic category? What's your magic word? And then three, how does this word and this category solve problems for other people, for the specific group that you're attempting to get into. Not all the world, don't concentrate on the world when you should concentrate on a smaller group and let it expand from there. Just like Starbucks when they started out somewhere in, uh, I don't remember where, Oregon, I believe, or, or Washington State. And uh, they had their one store and then all of a sudden they expanded all across the world, little by little. So focus on a local branch, because that's your test community. Don't go out and put billions of dollars without testing it out in a small group. That's the bottom, bottom line. At the end of the book, The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing, Al Reese and Jack Trout warned that many of the laws listed above challenge the established way of life. So you will face difficulties in implementing them. But if you manage to do this, if you manage to implement the laws, the 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing, then you'll succeed. You will succeed. Again, I suggest that you concentrate on a few of these. Number one is what's the magic word? Number two, what was number two? Does anyone remember what I said? Number two was... What's the magic category? The magic category, your magic category. The one category that will get you to be first in whatever it is that you're doing. And then number three, does anyone remember what number three was? The law of the mind. Solving. The law of the mind. Yes, solving other people's problems. How do these for one and two solve people's problems? Don't focus on getting sales. Focus on solving people's problems, and then you will get the sales multiplied. 
right? The law of the mind. Thank you, Charles, for that. So that's it for our review today of the 22 immutable laws of, ma of marketing. I believe that these books are getting us sharpened. And soon enough, we're going to have an, uh, a certificate, qualified certificate of learning marketing programs, not compared to any marketing program given in, in a college, but compared to a marketing program that companies need for in order for us to become CEOs or COOs or, or chief marketing officers and so on. Uh, in, in our path to success, we need to be able to learn a lot of these, just like Jim Rohn said. And this is why we took the time to go into marketing. I believe marketing is adequate because we need marketing now. So that's it. Have a great evening, everyone. Until next week, where we will review our next book. This is the Mastermind Book Club signing off.